Madam Deputy Speaker, over the past few months I have repeatedly called for an end to restrictions at the earliest opportunity, and I believe that the success of our vaccination programme gives us that opportunity. We are all aware of the pain that has been inflicted on so many – leisure, tourism, hospitality, aviation – the list goes on. This has manifested itself in the loss of jobs and livelihoods, and whilst the Government has done much to mitigate the fallout through its generous support schemes, it has just scratched the surface when what people really want to do is to return to normal. When you walk down the voting lobby, it's never a binary choice. No decision is clear-cut, for there are bits of every motion that you agree with and bits that you don't like. And for any self-respecting politician with the best interests of constituency, country and party at heart, you just hope that the stars do align. But I do have mixed feelings about the extension to the current lockdown rules. On the one hand, creating a wall of immunity amongst all adult demographics seems sensible so that we can move forwards. But by the same token, the ongoing restrictions in how we live our lives is killing business and people all over the UK. Not only is the cost of the taxpayer immense, but there's also a cost to our hopes, dreams and mental health. And the sooner we can smash through lockdown, the better. However, I've also been unequivocal that any policy decision needs to be driven by the science. And it remains a fact that the Delta variant is causing real concern with infections, hospitalisations and deaths spiking alarmingly. Aside from all the disappointment, the PM could not have been clearer in his stated position at the weekend. And it may just be that our younger generation has an expectation of being vaccinated against a killer disease before all restrictions are lifted. And it may be that cases are growing by 65% per week. And it may be that hospitalisations are increasing by 50% per week across the UK. And it may be that the NHS does need and deserve four more weeks to complete its job. So, Madam Deputy Speaker, in the light of the evidence presented to me and the decisions that have been made in good faith, I will be supporting all government motions this evening. I'd like to raise two final points, if I may. Firstly, it's essential, please, that when the list of authorised pilots is released, that it must include those flagship global events such as the Euros, Wimbledon, British Grand Prix, Chelsea Flower Show and the Goodwood Festival of Speed. The alternative, I'm afraid, will be cataclysmic. And lastly, I am increasingly concerned by the dichotomy between the unprecedented success of our vaccination programme and the ongoing risk aversion with government. As a military man, I am comfortable with risk. And I feel that we all now need to live with COVID in a way that's not been achieved so far. So using military parlance, given that we cannot transfer or terminate it, and Lord knows we've tried to treat it, it is now time to robustly tolerate COVID. I've got a feeling that all goodwill will be exhausted if the government does not honour its promise on the 19th of July. Thank you.